The story begins in the city of Paris in 1931, where there lived a cunning man named Papillon, an expert in opening any lock. One day, after the theft, when he handed the diamonds to his boss, the boss started questioning whether he had kept some diamonds for himself. However, Papillon flatly refused. Shortly after, a badly injured man was brought in, and the boss in a threatening manner said, if you lie to me, I will do the same to you. Witnessing this, Papillon felt a twinge of fear, but he collected the payment for his work and swiftly departed. Papillon went straight to meet his girlfriend Nanette, and gifted her some diamonds he had hidden from his boss. At that very moment, a man secretly observed the necklace in Nanette's hand. Later, they spent the night together, and Nanette expressed her desire to set up a small house away from the world of crime. However, the next morning, the police abruptly arrived at Papillon's house, accusing him of murdering the same man his boss had beaten the previous day. Papillon tried to convince them that he was innocent, but the policeman forcefully arrested him and took him away. Realizing that the authorities wouldn't listen, he acknowledged that he needed to escape from prison. Afterward, Papillon befriended a fellow prisoner named Julet. Julet informed him about the necessity of a significant amount of money to escape and pointed toward another inmate, Dega, saying he could help. As it turned out, Dega had a substantial amount of money, but his circumstances took a turn when he was caught making counterfeit notes one day. After this all the prisoners were transported by boat to a prison named Penal Colony. As night fell, Papillon approached Dega and offering protection in exchange for money. Dega initially rejected the offer. But that night, as Dega slept, he witnessed a brutal murder of the prisoner beside him, who had hidden money in his stomach. Horrified by the incident, the next morning Dega accepted Papillon's condition. According to the agreement, Papillon would protect Dega only until they reached the prison. Dega was confident that his wife would soon secure his release, so he initially refused to escape with Papillon. However, when night fell, the assailant from the previous incident returned to kill Dega. In a critical moment, Papillon intervened and saved Dega's life. Unfortunately, upon learning of the incident, the authorities punished Papillon severely. Despite the punishment, Papillon found solace in the fact that the person who owed him money was alive. The next morning, they all reached Panel Colony Jail, but suddenly Julet deliberately injured himself to be admitted to the clinic. He was attempting to escape from the clinic since it has the least security. The rest of the prisoners were then brought to this new prison, where many dreaded criminals were kept. The warden there was also very dangerous, and he warned all the new prisoners that escaping from there was impossible. Advising them not to attempt it for the sake of their well-being, he stated that anyone trying to escape would be sentenced to two years of solitary confinement. A second attempt would result in an additional three years of imprisonment. However, those caught trying for the third time would be sent to a prison called Devil Silent, where prisoners often go insane. Furthermore, if someone committed murder, he would be publicly beheaded. After this, all the prisoners were assigned the job of lifting stones. A few days later, Papillon approached a boatman, promising him a significant amount of money in exchange for the boat, and the boatman also agreed. He instructed Papillon to meet him on the shore the next night. However, a notorious prisoner caught wind of this plan and attacked Dega for money. Once again, Papillon intervened, catching the prisoner and beating him severely to save Dega's life. Observing all this, Dega realized that without Papillon, survival in this harsh environment was impossible for him. With no other options, he decided to escape with Papillon. The next morning, all the prisoners gathered in the field. Actually Julet had killed two guards while trying to escape, and within moments, he was beheaded and killed. Witnessing this, the souls of all the prisoners present trembled. Afterward, the warden ordered Julet's body to be taken to the crematorium. On the way, Dega suddenly started vomiting, because he had never seen a dead body until that moment. Papillon tried to convince him, but to no avail. When the guard arrived and instructed Dega to lift the dead body, Dega refused. The guard started flogging him. Unable to bear it, Papillon angered by the sight, picked up a stone and struck the guard on the head. Following this, Papillon ran away. Unfortunately, poor Dega, paralyzed by fear, couldn't even move. At night, Papillon reached the riverbank to meet the boatman. When Papillon asked him for the boat, the man burst into laughter. When Papillon turned around, he found himself surrounded by guards. It was then revealed that the boatman was the one providing information about escapees to the warden and he is receiving a substantial amount of money in return. Papillon was soon brought back to prison. There, the warden revealed that the guard whom he had hit with a stone had survived. As a result, Papillon would not face the death penalty. However, for the crime of escaping, he was now sentenced to serve the punishment of solitary confinement on another island. Upon reaching the new prison, Papillon's soul trembled at the atmosphere. 
In the previous jail, prisoners at least could move around and talk but here, he would be confined to a small room without making any sound. Even speaking to oneself was difficult in this prison. Furthermore, the food provided was only a useless soup. One day, he unexpectedly found a coconut in his food. Inside, there was a piece of paper with a message stating that he would now receive coconuts every day. Papillon understood that it must be from Dega. After a few weeks of receiving coconuts, the warden caught wind of it and in anger, he killed the guard who used to deliver food to Papillon. Following this, he confronted Papillon and demanding to know who was behind this. However, Papillon remained silent. In response, the warden declared angrily that Papillon would now receive only half a bowl of soup. After a month of insufficient food, Papillon had withered and turned into a thorn. One day, the warden suddenly brought delicious food and questioned him about the sender of the coconut, but Papillon remained silent once again. Infuriated, the warden ordered him to serve the rest of his sentence in the dark. Papillon's condition had worsened significantly. He neither received proper food nor could he engage in conversation, and the darkness surrounding him prevented him from seeing his surroundings. The combination of loneliness and hunger took a toll on his mental well-being. Eventually, he became so weak that he couldn't move, as a result, he had to be taken to the hospital. Coincidentally, Dega also began working in the same jail. Over the last year, he had completely gained the trust of the warden. One day, Dega came to meet Papillon and realized that Papillon was merely pretending to be crazy. Dega knew that this pretense could be a way for Papillon to return to the common jail. After this, he again started planning to escape from jail. This time, he decided to enlist the help of two more prisoners. Papillon chose a prisoner named Celier, who was very strong, and Dega chose Machuret, who was often bullied by everyone. Dega gave all his money to Celier, from whom he bought the boat. Then, the next night when the film was being shown to everyone, all four of them decided to run away. Although Dega was feeling very scared, Papillon explained to him that this was his last chance. Afterward, following the plan, Dega went to offer alcohol to the officers watching the film. He cleverly mixed a drug in the liquor and then patiently waited for the opportunity to steal the key to the main door. On the other hand, Papillon waited for Dega's arrival along with his other companions, but suddenly it started raining heavily. Then the lights went out, and Celior suggested they should run away now. However, Papillon was not willing to leave without his friend. Fortunately, Dega arrived with the keys at that very moment. Taking advantage of the darkness, all four of them opened the door and promptly escaped from the jail. But while running, the path ended and now they all had to jump down to reach the river bank. The rest of the group jumped and reached the bottom, but as soon as Dega started jumping, suddenly the lights came back. This startled Dega, causing him to fall in panic. Now he couldn't even walk. Celior suggested leaving Dega behind but Papillon still did not agree. He along with Machuret, supported injured Dega. They reached the shore where a boat stood ready for them. Without wasting any time, all four of them sat in the boat and ventured into the dark sea. A few hours later, as the sun rose, Celia realized they had not come very far. They calculated that the boat was too small to carry the weight of four people. Simultaneously, a fierce storm rapidly approached. With little time left, Celia using his strength pushed Machuret into the sea and then attacked Dega. But Papillon intervened and both started fighting. Celia, being much stronger than Papillon, was about to kill him, then suddenly Dega stabbed Celia in the back and killed him. After this, both of them threw Celia out of the boat and pulled Machuret back up. However, within a few moments, they were hit by a storm, and darkness surrounded them. When they opened their eyes, they found themselves on an island. In fact, some people on the island had seen them floating in the sea and saved their lives. A nun arrived and informed Papillon that the island was in Colombia. Papillon suggested to Dega that they should leave as soon as possible, but Dega, exhausted from running expressed his desire to stay, stating that their deal was now over. Papillon then approached Machuret only to discover that he was infatuated with the island's girls. Ultimately, Papillon decided to leave alone. However, he noticed some officers and realized that the nun had informed the police about them. After this, Papillon immediately picked up Dega, but at that very moment, the officers caught him. They also apprehended Machuret and shot him. Now finally Papillon and Dega were arrested and sent to jail once again. After five years, we find that Papillon had completed his sentence, and now he was being sent to Devil Silent Prison. To his surprise, upon arrival, Papillon discovered that Dega was also imprisoned there. Actually, Dega had mixed drugs in the officer's liquor, which is why he had already been sent to Devil Silent Prison. Both of them were very happy to see each other after five years. Then in the evening, both of them were sitting on the beach when Papillon got an idea. 
He told Dega that if they built a small raft, then the waves of the sea would automatically take them to the other end. But Dega said, brother, do whatever you want, but please keep me out of this. Actually Dega had been living a peaceful life here for the last five years, and his wife had also married someone else. That's why he had no special interest in returning. However he still helped Papillon in making a raft from coconuts. The next morning, the two friends hugged each other and said goodbye. Then Papillon threw the raft into the sea and jumped on it. Luckily, his plan was successful and the waves started taking him to the other side. When Dega saw him leaving, tears welled up in his eyes. And the movie comes to an end.